Hello and welcome to the future where analyzing your brainwaves has become as easy as putting on a pair of headphones with embedded EEG sensors in them and reading the resultant brainwave data from your watch or your phone. I'm Dr. Cody Rall, your medical doctor confidant. I've been talking about these technologies for the last 10 years and the field has literally exploded here in the early 2020s. Neurotechnologies now have various applications to include meditation training, focus and sleep tracking, or even early stage surfing the internet and thought to text language generation. With improved sensor technology and artificial intelligence analytics leading the charge, it has become a very interesting time for EEG technologies, even with tech giants like Apple filing patents to get into the mix. And even mainstream pundits becoming concerned about the power of this technology and the implications when it comes to the privacy of our thoughts themselves. I am not ready for what they are now calling a brain transparency. It's here. Don't dismiss this. It's here. These new devices can now read or even manipulate our mental states. So these are all consumer-grade uh, devices that are, in a way, leaking into the workplace. New technologies to observe and track human thoughts. Those averages um, through software and advances in artificial intelligence can then say, okay, this is happy, this is sad, this is paying attention, this is fatigue, this is mind wandering. If you're like most people, the brainwave EEG data can be intimidating to understand, but don't worry, you're in the right place. In this video, we're gonna break down the basics of EEG. We'll strip away the jargon and focus in on what really matters. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of EEG and be well equipped to decide if you want to invest in any of these wearable tech products that best align with your needs and lifestyle. And you'll also be more aware of what to watch out for as these technologies become more ubiquitous in our everyday lives. Have you ever wondered what's really going on in your mind when you're lost in thought? when you're sleeping or even meditating? One key to unlocking these mysteries lies in a technology called EEG, which stands for electroencephalography. I know it sounds really complicated, right? But actually it's quite straightforward in a lot of ways. Think of EEG like a stethoscope for your heart, but instead of listening to your heart, we're listening to your brain activity. Our brains are incredibly busy places with different areas constantly sending electrical signals for information exchange between different regions of the brain. Every time a brain cell neuron fires, it creates a tiny voltage change on the scalp that can be picked up by EEG sensors. EEG is the tool that detects these signals, capturing the brain's conversations as it sends and receives messages from within and outside the human skull. Different firing patterns create different waveforms in the signal. When we use EEG, we're measuring brainwave patterns. These patterns are like the rhythm of your brain's activity. Different rhythms or waves indicate different states of mind. For example, when you are deep asleep, your brain slows down into delta waves, but when you're focused on solving a problem, it revs up into faster beta brain waves. By reading these patterns, EEG gives us a window into various mental states from deep sleep to high concentration this technology has been around since the 1920s, but the necessary hardware back then could take up half of a room. More recently, we've been able to miniaturize EEG by transforming the sensors into wearables that send data through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and analyze that data on the cloud or with our smartphones. Now, if you have a lot of sensors that are listening to different areas of the brain and all these brainwaves are happening simultaneously, the resultant brainwave data is very complex. In the in the past, we would break it down through mathematic formulas like the fast Fourier transform that transforms it into frequency ratios that traditionally have been called delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. Maybe you've heard of them before. In the past, we've manually linked these frequency bands one by one to different distinct cognitive states. This grouping is still accurate and helpful as a baseline, so we'll cover it here, but then we'll take the complexity and the practicality to the next level by showing you what machine learning and artificial intelligence has taught us about brainwaves in recent years. 
Delta waves, the slowest brain waves, are primarily associated with deep, dreamless sleep. Theta waves are a bit faster and are linked to light sleep, deep relaxation, and drowsiness. Then there are alpha waves, which represent a state of calm alertness and are often seen during activities that involved relaxed attention, like during meditation practices. Moving up in frequency, beta waves are all about active, engaged thinking, problem solving, and decision making. In the beta wave state, the brain is really in work mode. And lastly, gamma waves are the fastest of them all. They are associated with high level information processing, learning, and even perception. There's data to suggest that when people reach really high levels of energetic meditation sessions, they have these big gamma wave bursts that are extremely interesting. We've known for decades that brain waves are more complex than these categories would make it seem. They oscillate with each other, interact, and create complex groupings that form the neural signatures for nuanced states like emotions and biomarkers for disorders like ADHD and depression. But many efforts to map these signals have failed in the past because of the complexity of the data. Only now with machine learning do we really have a chance to start to harness the amazing potential of brainwave big data analytics. One of the most significant advancements brought by AI and machine learning is the ability to analyze vast amounts of EEG data rapidly and with a level of accuracy that we've never seen before. Traditionally, the interpretation of EEG data required highly skilled experts experts and was often limited to human subjectivity and the constraints of manual analysis. This was good enough to detect large changes of EEG signals that signified seizures or traumatic brain injury. However, with machine learning algorithms, we can now process and interpret these data sets in a fraction of the time, and they are capable of detecting subtle patterns and correlations in brainwave activity that certainly were missed by the human eye in the past and is literally supercharging our ability to use this data for various purposes. For example, we now have adaptive EEG systems. These systems can learn from brainwave data they collect and adjust their algorithms in real time to better suit the unique neural patterns of individuals users. This personalization aspect is really groundbreaking in fields like mental health and cognitive assessment, where one-size-fits-all approaches have been less effective in the past. For instance, in neurofeedback therapy, like with this device Sensei, AI-driven EEG devices can tailor the feedback to specific brainwaves of the user. Sensei, for instance, detects peak alpha rhythm and adjusts its stimulation as a result. And this often leads to better outcomes of the experience meaning that your mental state is going to shift better because it made those initial assessments. Another area where AI has made a significant impact is in real-time brainwave analysis. By using machine learning models, modern EEG devices can interpret data on the fly and provide immediate insights to the user's cognitive states. This is vital in applications like focus tracking and enhancement, like with these neurable headphones that are coming out this spring. All of these advances have transformed EEG technology from a clinical tool confined to experts in the lab and hospitals to a versatile technology that can be incorporated into everyday life by the average consumer. And now they're being embedded in all types of wearable form factors like headbands, hats, and even eyeglasses. Some of the most popular ones on the market right now are the Muse headband for measuring and enhancing meditation sessions, MindLift, which uses the Muse headband to provide more flexible neurofeedback experiences at home, and even more advanced systems like the Sensei, which create near-infrared and soundscape stimulation patterns based on EEG measurements taken right before meditation sessions that are designed to improve your mental state whenever you want. And coming out to the public next month are these neurable headphones that track your focus. We will have to wait and see how the market responds to these here this year. Despite all these advancements offered by EEG wearables, it is important to address their limitations to give you a more balanced understanding of what they're capable of doing right now. First and foremost is the question of accuracy. Clinical EEG systems used in medical settings often use cumbersome caps with large numbers of electrodes and messy gel. This takes a lot of time to set up, but it improves the signal and gives more measurement and data points for the final analysis. In contrast, the wearables are trying 
to achieve a more compact and user-friendly form factor that has less electrodes and they tend to use dry sensors. So the wearable EEG data is just not going to be as clean as what you get in the medical setting. Most of these wearable companies are trying to overcome this with the brute force of filtering out noise in the signal with machine learning, but there's only so much that you can correct for. These limitations mean that although EEG wearables are great for general wellness and self-monitoring purposes right now, they're not replacements for professional medical diagnostics or treatment just yet. Another area of concern is privacy. As with any device that collects personal data, Data, particularly data as sensitive as brainwave patterns, there are valid concerns about how this information is stored, used, and shared. Users of EEG data are entrusting these companies with intimate details about our cognitive states, which raises questions about the data security and user privacy when you're interacting with them. Professor Nita Farenhani talked about this at length in her 2023 book, Battle for Your Brain, and is doing some awesome regulatory work ahead of mass adoption of these technologies. I agree with her book that it's crucial at this stage for these companies that are producing these devices to implement robust security measures to protect their data and be transparent about their data handling practices. Neurosity, for example, has made it a point for years to encrypt any brainwave data obtained through their platform, and they've been very public and vocal about that. I hate to say it, but there is a growing need for regulations and standards in the industry just to ensure that users' privacy is respected and protected, especially as these focus tracking technologies are starting to be used in the workplace. Another point with these EEG technologies is that it's worth considering that this EEG data is simply misinterpreted. The brain is very complex in EEG data, even when it's accurately captured or analyzed by artificial intelligence, can be open to various interpretations. Certainly, these companies should be held accountable for any claims they are making about the benefits of using Using these technologies, and I know a lot of research is being done behind the scenes to make sure that that's being done properly. And some people are rightfully a little worried about this technology becoming more powerful. We cannot use EEG to 100% project thoughts to the screen right now, but scientists are able to do this with more and more accuracy. Just this last year, a group out of Australia used an AI model to increase thought-to-text capabilities with an EEG cap from a historical 40% accuracy level to a new 60% accuracy level. There are people concerned that these technologies could read their thoughts against their will like in science fiction. First of all, don't worry, we're not quite there yet. Even in advanced studies like this Australian one, the subjects had to voluntarily train machine learning algorithms for many, many hours before their brainwave data could be decoded. For now, this is definitely beyond the capability of using wearables at home that just give us insights into general brain states like relaxation, focus, or sleep, but they don't translate into the ability to read or decode individual thoughts or memories. This technology at home is designed to understand the activity of the brain at the macro level, but not have access to personal or private mental content. It's not capable of doing that. Even if we do get there someday, recent work by fMRI scanners has shown that these technologies are unable to discern mental activity at the thought to thought level without users agreeing to undergo long training sessions with machine learning algorithms to create their own algorithms. And they can actually block their thoughts from being read if they choose to to do so even if they've been trained on the algorithms. The advancements that we're witnessing today are just the tip of the iceberg and the future holds possibilities that further blur the lines between science fiction and reality. Over the next few years, we'll see sleep tracking, focus tracking, and meditation neurofeedback applications continue to improve. For instance, I just tried out the Neurable focus tracking headphones at the Consumer Electronics Show and I was blown away. I think that they might be the first EEG technology to truly go mainstream and be used regularly in the workplace to improve productivity. We'll likely start to see changes in mental health diagnostics related to clinical EEG systems soon. And at some point in the next five years or so, we may have fairly accurate thought to text speech generation technologies through EEG or technologies like it. For now, if you wanna see more specifics on what brain wearables are available here in 2024, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.